Melissa from Rome Wise, your go-to guide to Rome, here today at the Trevi Fountain to show you how you can easily get from here to the Spanish Steps on foot. There are two easy walks you can do. One takes less than 10 minutes, the other takes about 20 minutes. So I'm going to take you on both of these walks, show you some of the hidden gems to see and do along the way, along with some places you can eat. And at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you how you can get a discount on my ebook just for watching this video. So let's go. To get from the Trevi Fountain to the Spanish Steps, we're going to take that street over there on the right hand side of the Trevi Fountain. There are just a couple quick things you can visit right here in the square if you're interested. The first one is this church right behind me that's facing the square. It's called Saints Vincent and Anastasius. This church has a strange claim to fame. The hearts of nearly 30 popes are inside this church. Uh, the other thing is when it's open, this is a good vantage point to get a view of the fountain. So a good photo of the fountain from kind of far back and a little higher up. And the second thing you could pop in to see, if you're interested, is this pharmacy, which is from 1552. It's one of the oldest in Rome. You can actually go inside and check out some of the unusual fixtures in here. And in just a few minutes away from the Trevi Fountain, we have arrived at the intersection of Via del Tritone. Just up the street a little bit, if you want to take a detour, you will see this giant building here, which is Rinascente. That's the flagship store of this huge department store here in Italy. You can also go up onto the roof, have a drink, have some lunch, and a beautiful view of Rome. If you've taken a detour to visit Rinascente, you're gonna to wanna to come back to this spot to continue the walk so you can see some of the things that we're gonna see on this street. Okay, the first thing is this aqueduct. So here's the sign telling you that you're looking at an aqueduct from ancient Rome, the Aquedotto Vergine. This is actually part of the aqueduct that feeds the Trevi Fountain. I've got a bunch of information about this on the website, and you can see it pretty well if you just look through the grating there. The other thing that's really, really cool is this doorway. This is a real doorway, it actually functions. You can see there's a lock on it. And take a look above the doorway, you're gonna see this papal shield. So this tells you the Pope responsible for creating this doorway and actually is written under there, it's Pope Sixtus IV de la Rovere, who's the same Pope that was responsible for the Sistine Chapel, named for him, Sixtus. And this doorway is used to go inspect the aqueduct or to do some maintenance if need be. And it's still in use. intersection we have something really interesting. We have got a little plaque up there. It's telling us that John Lorenzo Bernini lived in this house. He actually owned it and rented it out. And we have this little church you could easily pass and not go inside, but it's really worth going inside. Here's why. Leaving the church of Sant'Andrea delle Fratte and just continuing on the walk that we were doing before, straight ahead. As we continue on this street, you'll see this beautiful building here on the right. It's got this beautiful architecture on the outside that is a clear indication that it was designed by Francesco Borromini, who was a rival to Gian Lorenzo Bernini. And just past this building, we are Almost there, straight ahead, where those palm trees are. That's the square at the bottom of the Spanish Steps. That flag you see waving, that's the Spanish Embassy to the Holy See, which is where the name Spanish Steps comes from. This piece of the piazza is called Piazza Mignanelli. Every December 8th, which is the holiday called the Immaculate Conception, the Pope comes here and changes the wreath out on the top of this column. Just to the right, we have the first McDonald's in Italy, put here in 1986. Up ahead of me to the right is the bottom of the Spanish Steps. Up ahead of me straight ahead is the Barcaccia, the ugly boat fountain that was designed by Pietro Bernini. 
and probably his son, John Lorenzo Bernini, more famously. You may be interested to visit the Keats Shelley House Museum. It's quite fascinating. It's where the romantic English poet John Keats lived when he was in Rome and where he died in 1821. He is buried in Rome. For you alone, no house can... You can also have a stop here at Babington's Tea. This is an iconic place that's been in Rome for over a century. It's really fun and for the first time ever, they have tables outside on the square. So it's pretty unusual, pretty special. How did you like that walk? If we made no stops whatsoever, it would have taken us under 10 minutes. Now I'm gonna show you a slightly longer walk, a little bit of a detour, where you're gonna to get to see something else. And we're gonna end at the top of the Spanish Steps. Let's go check it out. Looking at the fountain, we are going to head over here to the right and walk down Via del Lavatore. There is in fact one really traditional, old-fashioned place still left on this street and I just love it so much. It's this Salumeria here. And you can get amazing food to eat here or to take home with you if you want to pack some and take it home. Yes, that is a boar's head up there in the window. But let's pay attention to these incredible foods in here. Highly recommend. As we continue to walk, there are lots more places to eat. One of my favorite being just down this street to the right. It's called Piccolo Arancio. You can see the tables down there. If you're looking for quality Roman food, that would be one of my first suggestions. There's also the Piccolo Buco, which means a little hole, and it is known for pizza. We're gonna head back this way, back on our walk. Straight ahead, we have the Quirinale, the Quirinal Palace, which is where the president of Italy lives. At this point, we have come to a crossroad. This is called the Traforo. You can see the Messaggero building there. And off to my right, is a tunnel, which is why it's pretty loud, lots of cars coming. I'm gonna cross over this street here. If we were to go directly to the left, we would come to the Spanish Steps, the bottom of the Spanish Steps where we just were. Now we can make a choice to go this street or this street over here. Here at the intersection of Via Rosella, which I'm climbing right now, Via del Boccaccio, we have an historic building. This building is riddled with bullet holes and it is to remind us of the horrors of war because there was a very brutal incident in World War II that began on this street. And I've got a page all about it on the website if you want to come and read it. On another note, We've got Osteria Romana, one of my all-time favorite Roman trattorias in Rome. So you can pop in there for a lovely meal. Normally, you need to book in advance though, so maybe popping isn't the best idea, but um, right now in the time of COVID, you could certainly give it a try. And just to the top of this street, we have Palazzo Barberini, which is one of Rome's most amazing museums and very undervisited, which means it's almost never crowded. I really cannot recommend this museum enough. If you don't really have time, you could pop in and just see the twin staircases of Bernini and Borromini. They're not actually twins, they're on either side of the museum. Another option parallel to Via Rosella is Via degli Avignonesi. This is another quiet cobblestone street that you can take up to Piazza Barberini. Speaking of places to eat, one of my favorites right here, Colini Migliane. Guys, you cannot go wrong here. The pasta, the wine, the desserts. Look at this. 
can watch them making the pasta in the laboratory here. Oh my goodness, look at all those pastas. Oh, this is another place you really need to book in advance. And looking just to our left over here, you can see that obelisk that it's, that's the top of the Spanish steps. We're gonna head over there in just a minute after we take a look at this amazing fountain by Gian Lorenzo Bernini, right here in Piazza Barberini. I just wanted to show you how you could include a detour to visit Piazza Barberini and see this beautiful fountain. And now we are gonna head back on the walk to the top of the Spanish steps. So there is Piazza Barberini, and I'm gonna head up now via Sistina on our way to the top of the Spanish steps which is called Trinita dei Monti, named for the church up there. This is the top of the Spanish steps. That obelisk is actually a Roman copy of an Egyptian obelisk. The original is in Piazza del Popolo, just a little down the hill from here. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video all about how to get from the Trevi Fountain to the Spanish Steps. If you're interested in getting my ebook, you can download it with a 30% discount. Here's how. Use the discount code ROMEWISE, all lowercase, followed by the name of the artist who made two angels in a church on the way between the Trevi Fountain and the Spanish Steps. I know you're going to get it. Thanks for watching. See you at the next video. Ciao for now.